Tonight against the Chicago Bears. The beautiful skyline of Chicago overlooking Soldier Field sold out today for the Vikings and the Bears. The Bears with a two-game lead atop the NFC Central. The Vikings at two and six need a win to get back into the chase. Hello, everybody. I'm Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris here at Soldier Field and these two and six Vikings. Johnny, a hard luck team losing three games in the final minute so far this season. And last week, they lose their quarterback, Tommy Kramer. That's right. Archie Manning is going to start this week. As you know, he came on in the second half last week and did not do very well. The Vikings had only six yards of total offense, but he's had a week under his belt to practice, and he says he's going to do a lot better this week. However, as he told us yesterday, of all the teams I'd like to be starting against in my first shot, it wouldn't be the Chicago <laughs> Bears. They're number one in defense. That's right. Well, the quarterback situation for the Bears has improved, on the other hand. Last week, for the first time since the first game of the year, Jim McMahon played at 100%, had a great day against Tampa. They certainly did. They amassed a lot of yards on offense, 474 yards, and they showed they could do it without a stress on Walter Payton because of the fact that McMahon completed 12 of 18 passes, had three touchdowns, and real tip-off on Jim McMahon is that he has not thrown an interception since the first game of the year, 98 straight attempts without throwing an interception. So Jim McMahon is 100% healthy, and the Bear offense is much more diversified. So we're almost ready for the kickoff. Uh, Tim? The Bears will kick it off, and we have just a perfect day for football, provided it doesn't rain. There was a forecast for some rain, but so far it looks good. 50 degrees under gray October skies. Perfect football weather in Chicago. Wind, of course, can be a factor uh, here at Soldier Field. So far, it doesn't appear to be. There you see the standings in the Central Division. The Bears, two up at five and three, ahead of Tampa Bay and Detroit. Minnesota clearly needs a win today if they have any chance at all, and the Vikings would still need help from other teams. Yep. And the Vikings will start with Archie Manning at quarterback. Alfred Anderson, the outstanding rookie. Ted Brown, the veteran. And then Mike Jones and Sammy White will be the starters at wide receiver. Steve Jordan, the tight end. Irwin, Tausch, Sams, Rouse, and Riley across the front. And we'll tell you more about some of the changes in position in the offensive line. Sams starting for the injured Jim Huff, who just got is, and it's going to be short by about a yard. Defensively, the number one team in the entire National Football League. Hartenstein, McMichael, Hampton, and Richard Dent across the front. Otis Wilson playing with a, a sore groin. Singletary and Harris are the linebackers. And the secondary, Richardson with a cast on his broken left wrist. Frazier, Bell, and Fensick. So, well, you've got the Vikings offense ranked 12th in rushing, 21st in passing, and only 17th overall against the number one team in the NFL against... The Russian, number one overall, fifth against the pass. So that would appear to be an overmatch in that department. But the Vikings, of course, have other ideas. Manny. For Brown, incomplete. Brown tried to one-hand it. Tight coverage on him by Otis Wilson. Had he caught the ball, he would have been dropped right at the line of scrimmage. 35-year-old Archie Manning in his 14th season out of Mississippi. Came over from Houston in a trade and getting his chance because of the injury to Tommy Kramer. Last week, a shoulder injury in the game against Detroit. There is Kramer wearing the hat and jacket in the middle of your screen. Last week was 7 for 15 before going out with the injury. And it's somewhat an indefinite situation as to his return. It's a sprained shoulder, an old separation uh, injury and the same shoulder where he had a separation previously and they say a couple of weeks it could be longer Brown got only a yard and we are now third and nine as the two running plays Johnny for the uh, Vikings from this first down situation uh, well the, the uh, incomplete pass and the run by Brown have been stopped cold At that time the Bears blitz up the middle with the safety Todd Bell and uh, a lot of folks figured that the Bears will blitz a lot because Manning has not uh, played all that much and the Bears uh, like to blitz sometimes especially young inexperienced quarterbacks now Manny's not an experience but he's got to be a little bit rusty shot four there are a couple of games that they could have won with some breaks second and a long four Darren Nelson is forced wide and dropped for a loss Mike Singletary Buddy Ryan his defensive coach says best linebacker in football certainly among the inside people because those outside guys like Lawrence Taylor and Hugh Green get a lot more of attention because of the number of sacks they get pressuring the quarterback and so on but Singletary among the inside guys not too many people would argue with Buddy Ryan I don't think no. even though his is a biased view 
And we have to give some credit for Todd Bell. He came across the line of scrimmage, too, and knocked down the interference to help Singletary out. Sean Gale's outstretched leg and got about three yards as he fell. The Bears offensively, Suey with Peyton in the backfield. Willie Galt and Dennis McKinnon are the wide receivers. Across the front, Emery Moore had the starter at tight end. Covert, Feta for the injured Mark Bortz at left guard. Hilgenberg, Becker, and Van Horn. Bortz bothered by an ankle, could play. And look Green at this. Green Bay in front of Detroit, 7 to nothing. Jesse Clark's one-yard run, and early score for the pack. Last week, had a fine afternoon against Tampa Bay as the Bears routed the Bucks. Peyton wants to throw. He's going deep for Carlos all alone. And Galt can't catch up to the ball. Walter Payton aired it out. Galt was coming from the far sideline and just simply could not catch up with Walter's pass. Now, Johnny, what's your speculation here? <laughs> well, Walter just misfired. He saw Galt so open. And as you can see, the Bears have coming up with all kinds of trick plays the last couple of games he just it looked like it went off the side of his hand as he threw the ball and Galt as fast as he is still could not get to it but he had plenty of room and way ahead of Rufus Bess and he was so open it was unbelievable it would have been an easy touchdown but uh, Peyton who's done so well in option passes you can't expect him to do it all the time because uh, you know you don't throw that many during practice at least the running backs don't high formation to the lead back Peyton Peyton picks up about five and gets to the 42-yard line before Dennis Johnson, the linebacker in the middle, made the stop. And defensively in their 3-4 alignment, Neil Elshire, Charlie Johnson, and Mark Mullaney. The linebackers, Matt Blair, back in action last week. Dennis Johnson, Scott Studwell, and Fred McNeil. The secondary has John Swain, Rufus Best for the injured Willie Teal, Hannon and Lee are the safeties. And, of course, uh, much talk this week out of Minnesota, the cutting of... Uh, Randy Holloway. Now the Bears offensively are number one in the rushing department thanks primarily to Walter Payton. The Vikings defensively against the rush are 23rd. Indeed, as you can see, they're well down among the 28 teams in the NFL in all three categories. However, last week against Detroit, they played very well, even though they lost that ball game again in the final minute. Uh, Peyton needed only 53 yards to break a thousand uh, for this year, which would tie, isn't it, tie a record of eight one thousand yard seasons? Franco Harris's record of scoreless with exactly eight minutes to play first quarter. Mike Ditka did not look happy on that pass from Peyton to Galt, which is why I was uh, speculating or asking you two as to uh, whether or not they had the right pass route on with Galt coming from the far side. Well, they had the right pass route. It just wasn't complete, but those things provide benefit that for makes a team later on. happy, doesn't it? it <laughs> <laughs> An incompletion is enough. First and ten bears. Play action. McMahon. McMahon to Dunsmore, the tight end, and he has a first down close to the 20-yard line. Boy, what a block by Dennis McKinnon. He came back on uh, Scott Studwell, number 55, and really crunched him, and that's a mismatch in size as Dunsmore on, but the Bears averaged 209 yards rushing. The Vikings now in trouble. They have to come up with a big play here. Elshire and Mullaney in on that tackle, and Mullaney is having himself quite a season for the Vikings. Three tight ends are in for the Bears. Saldi, Moorhead, and Dunsmore. Third and goal from the two. Suey behind Peyton. Touchdown. Okay, that time it was Peyton in motion, and Suey is going to be the ball player. And you see Jimbo Covert 74, and you can see Becker, the pulling lineman, get through, and Suey with his power just bowled his way into the end zone. The Bears have drawn first blood. 6 0 as Matt Suey. Scores the touchdown. The man from Penn State, the all-time, second all-time leading rusher out of Penn State, and that is saying something. Mullaney and McNeil made the tackle for Minnesota. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for an update. Tim, you mentioned the fact that the Green Bay Packers, they are ahead of Detroit. And here's their second touchdown, and it came on a pass from Dickey to Kaufman. It came out of that offensive set, and here it is right now. And Kaufman caught it, went in from 20 yards. It's 14-0, and of course, this helps the Bears. Let's go back to Tim. Well, those Packers have struggled, but uh, they've got offensive talent. You saw a little of it there. The injured player uh, in Kaufman.
Colbert. Charlie Johnson made initial contact. Scott Studwell and Greg Smith stopped him, but not before another Chicago first down. And now Walter Payton now needs 36 yards to reach the 1,000-yard mark for 1984. First down at the 18 of Minnesota. I think Franco Harris uh, holds that record right now. Walter Payton, who's every game breaks one record or another, including the big one he broke, was Jimmy Brown's. First down, wide open is McKinnon. Touchdown. You talk about having your options of receivers. Emory Moorhead and Dennis McKinnon were both wide open. If you look up to the right-hand side of your screen is McMahon just off the straight pass, and you'll see McKinnon catch the ball, and Moorhead was over to the right, and he was wide open. Easy pickings for Dennis McKinnon. Nobody covered him as Swain was over late. Six-yard line via the penalty route. The roughing the passer call against McMichael. And the Vikings in Bears territory now. Manning with the eye formation. Play action. Manning is cut by Richard Dent. And then Otis Wilson, and finally the whistle is blown as Manning popped up the ball. Richard Dent not only got the sack on Manning, but nearly stole the football and credit to Manning for keeping a firm grip on things. Richard Dent, who had three sacks last week against Tampa Bay, is really coming on. And he got around the horn there, outside of the tackle. And you were right about the fact that he tried to strip that ball. That was the first thing he was thinking of. Now, you'll see him way at the back of your screen. He comes around as he uh, gets around uh, Tausch and then just tries to strip that ball from Archie Manning. And Manning hung on for dear life there, almost lost it, and then the, the whistle blew. A loss of nine yards back to the 45-yard line of Minnesota. White, Jones, and Leo Lewis, the wide receivers. Manning's got a man open to Sammy White for a first down. Perfect first down pass play. Sammy White landed a one yard past the marker at the Bears 35, so Manning got it right back with a perfect strike. About that. First down at the 23 of Chicago. Vikings trail 13 to nothing. 8.44 to go first half. Manning under pressure is dropped. Dan Hampton gets the sack. And they're back at the 32-yard line. Dan Hampton with his fifth sack of the year. As you can see him just to the left of the center, Ron Sams, number 99. See how quickly he gets off the ball? He's double-teamed, gets out of it, gets away from Irwin, and then when Manning was forced to go out of the pocket, Dan Hampton was in on the tackle. That's why a player has to continue his rush because you never know when somebody else is going to force the quarterback to run a certain way, and that time Hampton ran himself into a sack. Fair sack, a nine-yard loss on that one. Second and 19. White, Jones, and Lewis, wide receivers to the Bikes. And they hand off the Statue of Liberty, but the Bears bury it. Otis Wilson dropping Darren Nelson back to the 45-yard line. Otis Wilson blitzing from his left side as he went... Went for the fake, actually, but came across the line of scrimmage, and nobody knocked him off stride, and Otis Wilson out of Louisville playing with a sore groin. Didn't look like it was sore on that play, did it? <laughs> no. <laughs> we talked to him on Friday. He said, I'm going to start Wilbur Marshall and Ron Rivera, the two rookies waiting in the wings, but Wilson is a man who has used up all of the uh, time that he's been with the, the Bears to really assimilate this offense. He's in his fifth year. He acknowledges it took him a while to really get the feel of it. Now he says he, he does things without now he says he, he does things without having to think about the complexities of that defensive scheme. Manning intercepted. Richardson. It was intended for Leo Lewis. And Mike Richardson picked it off at the Bear 25. Chicago has stopped the Vikings and they have the ball at their own 30-yard line. Steve Jordan made the tackle on him. Well, Manning uh, was under some pressure, and he threw it into a whole bunch of Chicago Bears. There were a lot of dark jerseys around the situation. There's a great tackle coming up by Steve Jordan right here as he gets Richardson before he can return the ball. Had he not made that tackle, Richardson was headed down the sidelines. But the Bears have the ball. Minnesota's in some trouble. 
Tim Ryan and Johnny return. First and five. Walter Payton bangs his way, and he was stopped cold at the 39-yard line, wound up with at least two more yards and a first down. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for another NFL report. Tim and Johnny, and perhaps the Philadelphia Eagles are better than we gave them credit for. Watch the secondary. The St. Louis Cardinals get burned on this bomb. Here it comes. Mike Quick, it's 90 yards. And now the Eagles have regained their lead. They are up 14-7 on the Cardinals. Back to Tim and Johnny. Teams, the Cardinals and the Eagles, each having won their last three games, meeting hit for your man out of East Texas State, and they think he's got a future. Jones in motion back to the ball. Play action for Manning and sacked again. A fearsome rush. Led again by Richard Dent and the safety Todd Bell on the blitz. Their percentage of blitzes is starting to pick up in this football game as they come out of that 46 defense that they have and they bring everything but the kitchen sink. Wilson was coming from the outside. You see Todd Bell 25 who's the first one that got there who forced Manning to turn to try and get away, and Dent was there for the for the clean up, clean up as the Bears record another sack. So it looks like they're gonna start trying to put pressure on Manning, even on first down. Loss of eight on that coach, Les Steckel, hoping that his Vikings could get into the end zone here. They made a last second shift. Manning's pass is intercepted by Singletary. Whistles and flags everywhere. However, and it looks like they're going to call that Manning was in the grasp of a tackler back at the 30-yard line. And it would be Steve McMichael who had him wrapped up there. We'll wait and see if that's the call, but they are uh, wiping out the interception downfield. And that is a big Bobby Clark fan, Philadelphia Flyers star, as you. Second and five for the Bears at the 42-yard line. And going deep for Moorhead. And it is complete. Moorhead stole the ball from Carl Lee at the two-yard line. Johnny Morris, I thought Lee had the football. It looked like he was waiting on the ball to come to him, and Moorhead just aggressively, like a defensive back, went for the ball, made the interception, and then alertly called a timeout because any player on the field now can call a timeout. Now the Bears have a big decision. Are they going to go for the touchdown or take the field goal? There's only time for one play here as McMahon puts it up. Carl Lee thought he had an interception there, and Moorhead just takes it away from him, jumps up, calls timeout, and a uh, uh, very alert play by Emery Moorhead as it looked like a sure interception. 87, man from the local Chicago area, went to Evanston High School as they're going to take the field goal. Bob Thomas is out on the field. The Detroit Lions have just kicked a field goal. It is 21-9. The Packers, of course, by winning over the Lions, would knock Detroit three games behind Chicago if the Bears hold on. Now, here is Dickey, who has been perfect in the first half. Nine of nine for 142 yards and two touchdowns. That one to Kaufman. And Monty Clark now with his hands full in Detroit. Dickey again looking for his tight end, Kaufman. He's got it at the five, and he'll go in for the 20-yard touchdown. And again, Detroit has just come back to kick a field goal by Murray. It is now 21-9. Got to get something going here. They're at their own 26. They haven't got a point. They have a missed field goal try by Stenerud, the closest they came. Alfred Anderson. They string it out, and he gets very little of anything. Richard Dent stayed right on him. And road hurt on him out of bounds with Al Harris making sure he did not get the corner turned and it'll be he's his left-handed stance makes it easier for him to work from the right side but it's a recent switch that may be affecting their pass blocking and plus Ron Sands in for the injured Jim Huff at center that's knocked down at the line of scrimmage and it was Dent getting a big paw a bear paw up to knock that pass of Mannings down he did that same thing last week knocked down a pass or deflected one that was intercepted as Richard Dent has really come on when he and all linemen are taught when you see the quarterback take one, two to throw, you forget your pass rush and just jump up in the air. And that is what Richard Dent did as the Vikings now have a key third down situation, third and ten. Two or three times, Sammy White has come through for them, but uh, we'll see what happens now. White is up at the top of your screen. Slightly. 
They are three of eight turning it over on third down, and he's got two of them. A low snap, and Manning, all he can do is cover the football. Out of the shotgun, Ron Sams with another difficult low snap, playing for the injured Jim Huff, and so uh, and Manning does not even get a chance on third down. Okay, you get to take a look at it. Actually, it was catchable. It was low, but uh, Manning should have had it. And all he could do then was just uh, sit on the ball as Greg Coleman is on the putt, and Les Steckel's wondering what's going wrong. 20, the last back to the 20-yard line. Suey breaks a tackle, and Suey flashes up over the 35-yard line. Some hard running for Matt Suey. About a 14-yard pickup, Rufus Bess and Tommy Hennon. The corner and the safety, 21 and 45, make the tackle for the Vikings. Leo Lewis out to the left, Mike Jones out to the right. Brown and Nelson, the running backs, in a wide set. Straight drop for Manning, and Al Harris blitzing. Had nobody touch him. And another Chicago sack. So that number one defense in the NFL shows another reason why. So many looks, so many moves. Now, notice number 90, Harris is to the left of your screen. He's on the other side in front of the tight end, but he doesn't cover. He comes in on the blitz, and Manning had no chance as the Bears fool him with their defensive strategy once again because you, when somebody gets in there slick and clean like that, there has been a mistake. Five sacks for Chicago, none for Minnesota. 47 yards lost. Close to five. Watch the double team on Dan Hampton. He's complaining that he got held. He's number 99 right there in the middle. Now he goes through two guys. He claims they're holding him, and it looks like uh, somebody might have been Curtis Roush. <laughs> and now he says, did you see that? Life's tough enough out. Life's tough enough out here. Second down, a long five for the Vikings. Pressure on Manning. He's sacked again. Well, Hampton might have been bothered by a lack of a call on the previous down, so he just went ahead with Richard Dent and got another sack on him. Well, the Viking blocking just broke down here. As you see, 99 is Hampton. Dent, Mark Hartenstein gets through. Steve McMichael, 73, 76, forced McMahon, or I should say uh, Manning, out of the pocket, and there's Dan Hampton with a half a sack along with Dent. A whole bunch of people in on that one. Look at that, six Chicago sacks. They had 27 going into this game. And Les Stegel says, what do you do now? 50, 50, 40 yards in sack loss. White, Collins, and Leo Lewis, three wide receivers for the Vikings. Manning put into another difficult third down. Hartenstein, loose ball. Manning injured on the play. Hartenstein got him from behind. And the sack. The play whistled dead prior to the fumble, evidently, and so the Vikings will have to punt. Manning got up a little slowly and limps off. Hartenstein chased him all the way from the other side of the field as uh, Manning did fumble that ball, but uh, the Vikings did recover it. Mike Hartenstein, who had uh, a couple of sacks last week, been playing injured with sore ribs, and I'll tell you, the Vikings are in big trouble. They just cannot handle the Chicago Bear defense. Bobby Hurt, they've had so many people hurt this year, so many. This is Peyton on first down. Has about four to the 30-yard line and another 1,000-yard season for Walter Payton, tying him with Franco Harris for eight career 1,000-yard seasons. A standing ovation for Peyton here at Partisan Soldier Field, 57 yards on the day, and how often these fans have stood to acclaim the play of Walter Peyton. One achievement, one record after another. And there is how it looks. Peyton and Harris each with eight, or set with six. Peyton again. And he is wrapped up by a good defensive play reaction by Tommy Hannon. What a step. One setback is Ted Brown. Slot formation right. 
Here they come. A deep drop for Manning, and they get him. Otis Wilson. There were seven Bears rushers on that play. Seven. And Otis Wilson is on the outside, number 55. As you can see, what happens is that when the tight end releases, Tim Irwin doesn't know who to pick up. He's got Al Harris and number 55, Otis Wilson, coming in. And there were just too many bears on that side of the ball. As the Vikings can handle it, that's eight sacks. The league record, I believe, is 13. And they need only one more to tie their own club record, which they've done twice against Green Bay in 1970, against Green Bay in 1970, St. Louis in 79. Another low snap. Manning scoops it up, and he is dropped. A flag down, but the infraction is against Minnesota, and the Bears have tied their all-time best day sacking quarterbacks with nine. If it's against Chicago, then they will still need, they will still need one to do it. Illegal motion, 76 offense. The penalty is declined. So they have nine sacks on the day, and can you blame these guys for being illegally in motion? Yeah, that's I right. mean, they're getting desperate out there to try and keep the bear rushers out. Okay, there's 76 to the left of your screen. The snap wasn't too hot either. It looked like he might have moved a little bit too, but look at that snap. But they're just not able to handle the bear rush. Even when they have enough men, the bears are crisscrossing quite a bit and confusing that offensive line, as you know, that has moved a lot of people around. This is getting brutal. Third down, way back at the 32-yard oh. line. Manning oh. is hit again by Bell. Ron Sams again with another poor snap. Manning took a real shot from Bell. That is 10 sacks this afternoon for the Chicago Bears. A new club record in that department. And nobody had a hand on Bell. Slick and clean. Archie Manning didn't have a chance. Did not have a chance as Bell came from the outside. Nobody touched him. Buddy Ryan, the Bears' defensive coordinator, who has masterminded the blitzes that have worked so well this Perfect year. And Chicago Bears. has 10 sacks. That's a new Bears 29. record. And the Bears' defense, number one in the league, number one in run defense. And who knows, they may be number one in pass defense after this game is over. Buddy Ryan. 16 to nothing, Bears football. The Vikings, Archie Manning, under the rest they come. All day, and he's under it again. It is Dent and Otis Wilson. Dent had a hand on him. Wilson finished him off, and Archie Manning has got to be wondering why he's playing professional quarterback. There must be a nicer way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Well, he makes a lot of money. But he's sure earning it today. Archie Manning is shaken up as the Bears went into their 46 defense again. And they bring those people, 90 and 55 and Dent. All those people came come a-rushing, and the Vikings have not figured out how to block it, how to attack it, as Manning looked like he may really be shaken up. Yeah, Boy, it's been like a tough day for a, Archie. Got a shot uh, in, the, uh, in the face, it appears, and uh, not deliberate, I'm quite sure. But uh, you hate to see this great competitor hurt. He is a fine man. Archie Manning. We'll be back. Assisted off his left eye. Okay, Richard Dent, 95, will get in on it. But the key was from the other side of the field. He was forced out. Dent gets a hold of him. And here comes Otis Wilson with a real hit. And this drives him right into the turf. Boy, that's a jolt. Looked like he got a shoulder right up under his face guard from... Wilson and uh, clearly on that replay was not intentional and, it, and uh, it looks like Archie's all right but Wade Wilson 33 seconds left Wilson rolls away from the pressure can't find an open man unloads the ball intercepted Bell Todd Bell to the 48-yard line will finish up this football game. Now the Vikings showing some feistiness even at the end. Uh, come off the sideline here, objecting to some of the activity. And we have 19 seconds left as Bell effectively ends the game for the Chicago Bears. Their final score will have the Bears 16-7 over the Minnesota Vikings.
for Johnny Morris. This is Tim Ryan saying so long from Soldier Field with a final score.